Hello there, I am here today to bring you my 1,500 subscriber Q&A. Thank you for people who left questions. I didn't get a huge amount of questions, so it's not going to be overly long, but that's fine. I've got some really good ones in there. So, let's get started. Leah said, do you have any long-term travel goals or anywhere you would like to visit worldwide? Um, me and my partner really want to go and see Prague this year at some point, just have a weekend there. Um, but in terms of long-term goals, it, we'll probably never get there. We'd love to go and see somewhere like Brazil, but obviously flights and accommodation would be so expensive that it's, it's definitely a pipe dream, but I think we would both love to do something like that. Um, we've also kind of toyed with the idea of visiting Rome, but we've heard so many terrible things about it as a travel destination. People who we know have gone there have said such negative things about just how busy it is, how stressful it is to actually visit, so I think probably we will avoid that, and again, it will be really expensive expensive but those are our sort of go-to's. Peony said do you have any rituals to get you in the mood when you're writing fiction or can you jump right in after writing other work for your customers? Um, this is an interesting question because as a general rule I try and avoid writing rituals because I think when you get into the habit of needing to do certain things before you can write it, it can be unhelpful and unhealthy and you sort of become reliant on that and it, it becomes just a way of putting things off. But in terms of when I split from my day job writing to my personal writing, it is pretty difficult and I find that I do need something in between the two to just split the two different types apart. So I do tend to go for a quick walk, even if it's just a 10 minute round the block. Um, generally I try and make it about a 20 minute half hour walk. Um, I just find that that helps to clear my head and then I can sit down and get on with a different style of writing. As it stands I don't have to do that, um, sometimes I do just change um, because I find that kind of helps my headspace and make a cup of tea and then get straight on, um, it depends how much time I've got but I do try to have that sort of walk in between the two and she also asked do you ever have pauses in your reading because of writing fiction so the book you're reading won't sneak into your writing this is an interesting one and it's not something I do because I have a very addictive personality and reading is kind of an addiction for me like I feel panicked if I don't read it, it's how I relax so I really get into a fluster if I don't read but sometimes I think especially in terms of the time taken and, and obviously picking up on a writer's voice um, it would be helpful if I could put my reading in for a while and focus on my writing and I know that's something a lot of writers do do I remember I was reading The Artist's Way um, I can't remember who it's by but it, it's a famous sort of writing help book um, and, and it got to a point it gives you weekly tasks and it got to a point where the weekly task was to not read anything for the week um, and that's the point that I stopped following that guidebook because not reading for a week who would I even be who would I be but it is something that I would like to work on and I think there's definitely a point there that when you're constantly consuming other people's words it can sometimes interfere with your writing but I think it's all about splitting things so I would never read somebody else's writing before getting started with my own um, I never read any books until I'm done with my personal writing for the day and I think that probably helps um, little things like that are things that I can do but I, if people can stop reading altogether then that's admirable and I wish I could do it then Katie at Books and Things asked her, how did you go about transitioning or finding work as a freelancer? Um, my journey here, I feel like, I feel it's kind of a cheat when people ask me this because I didn't have any struggle to find my freelance work. It, it's kind of one of those situations that I fell into it. Um, and for the first few months, the whole time I was just waiting for it to fall apart and it didn't and I'm still doing it and it's been over a year now. Basically, long story short, I left my job um, knowing that I had enough savings to last me for six months because I, I really didn't enjoy my job and I think it was one of those things where I was just comfortable so I didn't look for another job because I was comfortable in what I had so I forced myself to leave that job which was the most frightening thing I've ever done um, in the hope that I could get some work copywriting and I did do um, a little course thing online that just sort of talked you through copywriting. I'm not saying that people should do that because I don't think it was actually that helpful and I kind of felt like it was a waste of money. Um, but it, it kind of got me into that headspace and it got me aware of the jobs that could be available. But as I say, that's not necessary at all. It was just a little course book thing that had loads of different tasks in it. Um, and there was a final exam as well, but it, it wasn't an official thing at all. Um, and it didn't come into, I, I never mentioned it when I was getting my job. Um, but there was that, and I think that helped me get into the headspace. And literally all I did was search for freelancer jobs online on Indeed Job Search. Um, and this company came up and and all I had to do to get a trial with them was send off a trial piece. I think I probably did do better in that 
trial piece because of having done the course on how to write stuff like that um, which I probably wouldn't have had any clue about otherwise but yeah I just sent that off and literally within a few hours I got an email back saying we would love to do a trial with you um, can you do four pieces for us tomorrow um, so it was all like ah after I'd been looking for a job by this point for about four months all of a sudden in like two hours of me sending off this thing I had I had money coming in um, so it was a paid paid trial I did about three days for them of doing four jobs each day and then I went into the full course load of eight which has since grown to ten um, and it's really fun and really good so I would say if you feel like it's out of reach to become a freelancer look on Indeed Jobs I think it's one of those things that not many people think of doing but there are so many freelance jobs on there with everything from PAs to the, the kind of work I do it's fantastic and it changed my life so there we go and she also asked to tell us more about your current writing project for those of you who don't know I have been working Excuse the barking dog, by the way, she just keeps barking at random intervals, I can't be bothered to wait for her. So, for those of you who don't know, I have been working on a short story collection for the past year, I've decided to kind of put that to the side, I'm still writing short stories, but I think focusing on that completely was kind of holding me back, um, and I don't know whether that's even the path that I want to go down anymore. So what I've decided to do is revisit a children's novel that I started writing about two years ago now, um, I thought I'd lost the complete thing but I managed to find a draft copy on my USB um, and it's pretty much finished. I'm just rewriting it all so that I can refresh my mind on it and also edit as I go. Um, so hopefully, I'm hoping to have that sort of a complete draft of that finished by the summer which is really exciting. I'm also going to start working on one of the short stories that I wrote for that short story collection. I want to turn it into a novel because I don't think it works as a short story but I think it could work as a novel um, so I'm looking forward to getting started on that but at the moment I'm focusing on the children's book and also writing the odd short story in between. Um, I think it's useful for me to write short stories but it was never something that I wanted to go into properly um, and I think focusing on short stories has very much taken me away from novel writing which isn't a good thing so I'm going back to that. I'm going back to that. And then finally Azalea Lopez, I hope I've said that right, um, asked did you you always want to be a writer or did you want another job when you were a child slash teen? Um, interesting question because I kind of, I've always loved reading and I've always loved writing but I don't I don't think when I was a child I ever considered that that could be a job that I could do. Um, like I, I, I never thought really about the authors. Um, I, I just, it was something that I enjoyed but it, it never struck me as a career choice I suppose because adults don't really speak about the fact that you can be a writer. So in terms of actually pursuing a career in writing, um, that didn't start until I was in my 20s, which is quite late. Um, that's not to say that I wasn't writing until then, I was always writing, but I, I just never thought that I could actually seriously become a writer. So when I was a child child, I wanted to open my own animal shelter because I really loved animals. Um, and when I was a teenager, I actually wanted to be a psychologist for a long time. Um, and then when I was going into college, I wanted to be a photographer um, and it wasn't until sort of all of that fell away and I realised that actually that didn't really suit me that I was like yeah do you know what writing writing is for me so that's everything thank you everyone for your questions and again thank you for the amazing 1500 subscribers and I will see you all next time bye